Hi, I'm Lucy at Ballyhoo Creations, and this is the first video in a series called Machine Embroidery for Beginners. This video will talk about what supplies you need so you can get started with machine embroidery. I'm not going to tell you to buy a ton of stuff, and I'm not sending you to affiliate or sponsored sites where I make money from the supplies you buy. This is just a bare bones rundown of things you need so you can get started learning machine embroidery and build your confidence. Once you've reached that point, then you can build your stash of supplies and have some good old retail therapy along with what I call stitch therapy. This is probably the biggest tip in the whole series, so I hope you're paying attention. Get some white woven cotton to practice with and plan to just throw it away. Trust me on this, learn to get it right on this stuff because before moving on to t-shirts and towels, you'll be glad you did. Everybody wants to jump in with t-shirts and towels, but those aren't for brand new beginners. Do at least a few stitch outs on this plain woven cotton first before moving on to something more challenging. You can always use this fabric later when you test new designs. Consider this your control fabric because it's the easiest to embroider on. You can get this fabric at any fabric store. Just look for quilters, cotton, or bleached muslin. I'm not a fan of unbleached muslin because the little bits in the fabric can mess up your needle. So look for plain white or other light colors. Something like this is good too. Just so you'll be able to see your stitches on it. This is two yards by Waverly that I picked up at Walmart and it's fine for practicing, but you can find better quality cottons at quilt shops. Any of these would be fine. You just don't want something stretchy. Stabilizer is not optional. I can't tell you how many times I see beginners try to embroider without stabilizer and they can't figure out why it looks so horrible. Machine embroidery requires stabilizer. I'll do a whole video on stabilizers later in this series, but to start out with machine embroidery, I suggest some cutaway stabilizer. And the reason it's called cutaway is you actually have to cut it away from the design after you've stitched it. I also suggest you go ahead and get some tear away. This tears away cleanly away from the design on the back after you're done. If you have some tear away and some cutaway, that will get you off to a, a good start. And then we can deal with fancy stabilizers later on and when to use what. Stabilizer can come in sheets like this or also in rolls in all kinds of different widths. Just make sure it's wide enough for the hoops that you have. An 8x8 sheet of stabilizer won't cover a 6x10 hoop. So keep your hoop sizes in mind when buying your stabilizers. You can buy stabilizers in any sewing shop, either online or brick and mortar store. Amazon's also a good source. The Brother Reed and Embroiderex work just as well as the other more expensive brands. There's some quality differences between brands, but all of them work, so buy whatever brand you have easy access to. For your first few stitch outs, you will need 40 weight polyester thread. This is different than regular sewing thread, so don't cheat here. Get some good thread that is specifically made for machine embroidery and is 40 weight polyester. The 40 denotes the size or the thickness of the thread, and 40 is standard for machine embroidery. Most designs expect you to use this kind of thread, so the stitches cover the fabric properly and it'll feed through your machine better than regular sewing machine threads. Usually I tell you to buy whatever is available and the less expensive stuff is fine to use, but not when it comes to thread. Cheap threads can cause a lot of headaches and some machines don't play well with some brands, but play fine with other brands. Ask about preferred thread brands when you buy your machine or join an online user group for your machine and ask there. I've never had issues with Madeira or Glide or the Floriani. These are the brands that are sold in the sewing machine shops. Other brands like the Coates and Clark or the Sulky, those are found in the big box stores and they can work, but some people report having more issues with them. So I suggest starting with something a little bit safer that you know will work on your machine. What about inexpensive threads on Amazon? Sim thread has worked for me and others with great success. So has Brother Reed. People say that they like that. It's not as high quality as the others I mentioned before. I'll do a separate video in this beginner series all about thread, but for now you just need to get um, some to get started with. I made the mistake of buying a set of threads when I was starting out and it had lots of pretty colors and my machine did not work well with that thread. It was a waste of money. I couldn't even use it. So I'm not a fan of thread sets until after you know which brands work well for you. If your machine came with threads, that's the best stuff to start with. But if it didn't have threads included, 
then ask around and see what other people use for the same machine you have. What I suggest you buy is some neutrals like black and white. We are always using those and get brands that work well on your machine. You don't need to get all the colors yet. Start slow and build a quality thread collection. You can start out with the color palette you like. For example, I stick with my business colors like teal and pink and aqua. These are colors that I use quite frequently. And so I always make sure that I have plenty of those colors. I don't need all the colors. I just use certain ones over and over again. And that works well for me. If you want to get into photorealistic embroidery, you'll need a lot of threads for that. But if you're planning to do mostly applique or in the hoop, you might find that a small color palette works best for you. Most of us go through a lot of black and white thread, so make sure you pick up some of those neutrals. Do not start with metallic or specialty threads. Those are more challenging and you won't know if your problems that you're having are due to your thread or something else you might be doing wrong. Try to avoid rayon if possible for now. Rayon used to be the thread of choice, but it's not anymore. And you may need to adjust machine tensions if you're using rayon. So let's not start with that either. Start with 40 weight polyester, since most machines expect you to use that and it's what all the machines are tested with these days. You have plenty of time to play with threads later, I promise, but save that kid in the candy store mentality for later on after you've gotten comfortable with your machine. Where can you buy thread? It's best to start at sewing supply stores that carry quality threads. You can experiment with the cheaper brands later on. There are many places to buy thread online as well, but it can be hard to judge colors on your computer monitor. So if you must buy online, get a small thread set to get started with. Your machine should already have a needle installed, but pick up another case of embroidery needles just to be sure because they break from time to time and you want to make sure you have uh, extra all the time. Most embroidery is done with a size 7511 embroidery needle. These are specially designed for fast stitching and less thread shredding and breakage. So later on when you're doing heavy fabrics, you may want a 9014, but to get yourself going, just get an extra pack or maybe two of the 7511 embroidery. They'll all have the numbers on them. Just make sure they say embroidery somewhere on the package so that you won't have as many issues with your first stitch outs. You can buy machine embroidery needles anywhere sewing supplies can be found. They're all over the place. You can buy pre-wound or wind your own bobbins. It's a personal choice. If you've never wound your own bobbins before, they can get wonky give you a close-up shot of this when you see the loops on that that's going to cause problems with your embroidery so this is a bad winding of a bobbin which means you could use the pre-wound bobbins instead these come with the thread already on it some of them have tops on them some of them don't depends on the the kind that go in your machine or there's the plastic bobbins that you wind on your machine or a separate winder this one is a good one that has been wound on a machine Bobbins are sized differently for different machines and even machines within the same brand can have different bobbins. So search the internet to find what style of bobbin your machine needs and get several. It's very annoying when you run out of bobbin thread, so you want to have lots of them on hand. If you're going to wind your own, you might want to get some bobbin thread. This is thinner than regular embroidery thread. You can get this in black or white. But you can also use your regular embroidery thread underneath in the bobbin. That's fine. I did that for years before I started using bobbin thread. You're going to need some embroidery scissors to cut the jump threads. Those are the little tiny threads that get left behind. Even if your machine cuts threads for you, you'll still want some small curved scissors for those times when your thread cutter fails you. Also make sure you have a sharp pair of fabric scissors that you use for fabric and nothing else. And if you know that you're going to be doing applique, a nice pair of duckbill or applique scissors are also worth having. You can buy scissors anywhere sewing supplies are sold, and you can even use a pair of cuticle scissors if you don't have the uh, little curved embroidery scissors. At some point, you'll want to position your embroidery designs on clothing or some other items, and you'll need to mark on that project, and you don't want to ruin it, so get a disappearing pen or a chalk pen for that. I like the friction ink pens. They work just like a ballpoint pen, but they disappear with the heat of an iron. Now it's gone. You can also use markers that are erasable from, this is an air erasable, and there's a water erasable. 
it's the blue one here so these are also something that will disappear from the fabric or even a good old-fashioned chalk pen works fine um, but like I said I do like the friction which just goes away with heat and ta-da it's gone so I really like those but any of these will mark on your fabric without leaving a permanent stain you can find pins like these at sewing machine or fabric stores or the friction pins can even be found at office supply stores This is the fun part. There are thousands and thousands of designs you can use on your embroidery machine. But for this beginner series, I don't want you to buy designs just yet. Your machine should come with designs that were tested over and over for that machine. So we want to use those for learning. I hear you. It's likely you're not impressed with those designs. Most of us agree with you, but don't worry if you'll never use those designs ever again. Remember at the beginning when I said you should get some white cotton and plan to throw away your practice stitch outs? Part of that is because we're going to use those corny designs that came preloaded on your machine. To be fair, some machines have nice designs on them, but for most machine embroiderers, we like to buy designs and hoard them as much as threads. I don't know if I've ever used one of the designs on my machine for a finished project, and that's okay. Of course, I'll have another video in this beginner series that's all about designs and where they come from, but for now, just stick with the tried and true designs that came with your machine. Just like everything else I've said about supplies, sticking with those stock designs will eliminate any doubt about whether the design was properly digitized. I know you're ignoring this advice. You want to stitch out the pretty stuff and skip all the junk. Maybe you bought a design from a reputable site that people love and it should be safe, right? We don't know for sure, so why risk it? Just use the designs on your machine. Stitch them all if you want to. They are proven to work on your machine, and if you have issues and need to get support from the store you bought that machine from, they will be very quick to blame your third-party designs. Stick with the designs that came on the machine while you're learning and practicing. That wraps it up for this little video on starter supplies for beginning machine embroidery. The next video will show you how to hoop some fabric, and after that we'll start stitching. Check the description box below for links to future videos.